Good evening. I hope you had a wonderful day in the Lord. We are in the second chapter of First John. And I didn't give this background information about John earlier because I had to go to work and punch in. But, you know, John was a close apostle, follower of Jesus, right? He was said to be the one who sat closest to him uh, during the Last Supper. He also was said to have had, right, you know, a quick temper like so many of us have had. Uh, he was uh, one of the sons of thunder, right? Remember when he and his brother uh, were not welcomed and along with Jesus in um, one of the towns and he was like, you know, Jesus, go ahead and just rain thunder in this town. Forget them. Mm -hmm. But as he spent more time with Jesus, he learned mm -mm, that is not the solution, snapping at people, but learning the love of God. And isn't that the same for us today? The more we learn about the attributes of our Savior and how he is so long-suffering with us, how we are to be patient with one another. Amen. And that's why John focuses on so much for us to love one another. And this chapter in particular, second chapter, talks about our affection should not be on the world, but to one another as brothers. So I'm going to pass it to Timotheus because he was led to speak on verse 15. Yeah, 15. Uh, don't, <clears throat> don't love the world and what it offers. Those who love the world don't have the Father's love in them. So... Um, it's kind of evident when somebody it doesn't have like real love in them. That's be like you can see that when they do things to to make themselves feel whole or like or like they do things that the world tells them is like makes them feel valuable or whatever. And I used to do that too. Like I, I didn't I didn't know God that well. I didn't have a good connection with him, and I would just do things like that would mm, boost my my status in like people with peers or whatever, or like in the world, because those are the things the world said, like made you like, like the man or whatever. But as I, as I got older and matured a little bit, then I saw that that doesn't make me like a, a man or whatever. That makes me kind of like weak. And it shows me that it's, I don't have the strength to, to like, to have my own love and to have a love with God. When I, and that love of the world, like that, it never lasts. And it's always something more like, it's always a new fad, always a new trend or whatever. So when you find God is like permanent and if you stick with him, then you're not gonna have to like re up or find find more, you know. Mm, re up or find more. And <laughs> you know how that's funny you said that, you know, how Hollywood, how they change spouses they're like you know what i'm gonna have to upgrade you know now that i'm making this price or this price this salary range you know i'm gonna have to you know cut this wife off or do we hear this of husbands but just spouse and you know i'm gonna you know trade in but with god you don't have to trade because his love is stable it's unchanging it is solid. Amen. And in verse 16, for all that is in the world, right? This is why people are not satisfied because, yeah, they buy a car, but guess what? It, it, it doesn't satisfy. It's, it's cool for maybe 30 days, right? We're excited. We buy the, the pair of shoes. Yeah, that's good. That what? It doesn't fill that God-shaped vacuum or void. So, all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, right? Look at me, you showing off. You know, we see that all on social media, whatever. Mm -mm. Only God can feel that emptiness. And it's not of the Father, but it's of the world. In verse 17, and the world passeth away, it's temporary, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever, and that love stays forever. It's unchanging. So I want to encourage you to focus in on Jesus and his love and not just be swept away with what's in the world. And what specifically really spoke to me was verse 27. I don't know if you're facing a challenge tonight or this week or coming up, but 
if you're like, Lord, how am I going to do this? How am I going to surpass this situation? Well, it says this anointing will teach you. This is verse 27. And all things the anointing will teach you. It is the truth. It is no lie. And even it has taught you, ye shall abide in him. Abide in the truth of the Lord. Know that he will teach you.